Hey everybody, Michael Park back with another 3D Max tutorial for CreativeCow.net. Now, uh, a while back, uh, in my early years of 3D Max, a little over a decade ago, I saw the movie The Matrix, and I was really taken by the really cool bullet trail effects in the uh, rooftop scene where Neo's fighting the agent. And I tried and searched everywhere on the internet to see what kind of tutorials were out there showing me how to do that. And unfortunately, there weren't very many, and they weren't very good. Most of them related to having some, you know, particles, small particles trailing behind a bullet, and then kind of a water look behind it. It really wasn't the same type of lens or the small kind of circular disc refractive uh, particles behind the, the bullet that we saw in the movie. So even though that effect is now you know 12 years old, it's still being utilized every now and again. And, again. and I still think it's worthwhile to take a look at the technique to create it inside 3D Max so that you can use this technique in you know future applications. So let's go ahead and create ourselves a bullet. I'm going to hop here into the front viewport and just drag out a sphere. I'm going to knock the segments down to about 16 because it doesn't need to be that complex. Uh, I'm going to convert this to an editable poly by right clicking and choosing convert to editable poly. And then what I'm going to do is basically just delete half of this mesh. Grab the edge tool and loop it. Grab the move tool then just simply, simply hit shift and drag it back to create kind of a bullet shape and then grab the scale tool once again hit shift and pull down all the way in hit control vertex to select the vertexes that we want and then just come down here and hit collapse now let's grab all of the faces let's go into the polygon sub edit mode control a to select them all scroll down here and then just hit auto smooth which should give us a nice smooth bullet once we're done with that we can add a turbo smooth modifier to this and hit separate by smoothing groups and now we have a pretty easy bullet you can get as fancy as you want but we don't really need anything too crazy for this effect all right, we have our bullet. Next thing we need to do is create the kind of little lens that we're going to use as a particle behind this. And once again, we're going to turn to a sphere. So before we do that, let's rename this one bullet so we don't get them confused. Back in the create panel, let's grab another sphere. And this time we'll drag it out, make it just slightly bigger or about the same size as the bullet in diameter, I guess. And now all we need to do is select and let's scale this non-uniformly so we create kind of a flat disk with a little bit of uh, curvature on either side and we'll call this lens and I'm going to turn this into an editable poly too just because I like polys and slap a turbosphere modifier on, on this as well there we go so now we have our two building blocks here we have a uh, lens and we have a bullet. Alright, on to creating the particle effect that we're going to use to drive our animation. And back in the Create tab, let's go down to Particle Systems and let's just drag out a uh, particle flow source. Like so. And let's enter into Particle View. Now the first thing I want to do is to set up the actual animation using the ticks and just the little dots because it's a whole lot easier and less computationally intensive than using geometry. So that's the first thing we're going to do. And so we need to change a few settings. Right now the birth is set by default to emit at frame 0 and go up to frame 30. Let's put that up to 100 and let's decrease the amount of particles being emitted to 5. That way there's not as many being emitted and we can see things a little bit easier. Let's also come over here to uh, this dialog box and we want to turn the quantity multiplier for the viewport all the way up to 100 so we have 100% of the particles in our viewport. Okay, the next thing we need to do is to increase the speed. Right now it's set to 25. Let's go up to 150 just to give us uh, a little faster bullets and direction along icon arrow is fine but let's go from uh, the location, let's go at the pivot so it's all from one particular point. We also want to increase in the speed the divergence of this so it gets spread out a little bit as they go so that it's not all in the same line. Okay, now what we want to do is to set up some spawning so that we're having particles actually being spawned from behind the particles being emitted. 
and I think maybe the best way to see what I'm talking about. Go here into the perspective view. And as you can see, we have particles being emitted coming out, but there's nothing trailing behind them. These are going to represent our bullets, but we need the trails. So let's create those. I'm going to rename this event bullets. So you can, whoop, oh well, bullets. <laughs> and uh, I need to create some trails. So let's go down here to the spawn uh, test here. And let's drop this in the bottom. And what we want to do is spawn some new particles. So let's grab a shape instance and drop it out here and simply link these up. And right now the shape instance is set to none, which is okay. And the shape ticks, that's fine. Uh, there are different colors so we can keep things straight. Well, there's pretty close actually, they're green and green. Let's make this something different like maybe pink uh, so we can figure out what is what. And one of the things that when you create a shape instance, come down here or under the spawn tab and you can see that the inherited velocity or speed is at 100. We want that to be zero. We want them to actually be you know, emitted and then to just stay where they are. The next thing we want to do is to change the timing of their emission. But right now they're set to once. Uh, and you can do it by per second. I don't like that. I like doing it by travel distance better. So you can vary the speed of the bullets and you're still going to have a consistent trail. So if we click this on, and minimize this, you can see what's happened is we have the particles shooting off and then emitting a ton of particles behind them. We want to bring that down. And the reason why we didn't put the geometry on first is once you click this on, there's no way really to preset it and it would cause a whole long delay in getting uh, your viewports to, to update or it would just simply crash max. So that's why we did it by using the ticks instead of the geometry first. Let's increase the step size until we're happy with the distance between the particles. And we want them fairly close but not so close that it you know just is, is crazy. So we'll slide up here. This is something you can change whenever you want which is great about using particle flow. Uh, might still be a little bit tight. Maybe increase that up to double that, maybe eight. There we go. And that looks good. And the next thing we want to do is to add in, or to change our shape instance to update to what we want these to act, trails to actually be. So right now we have them as nothing. Let's pick our lens. And we don't really see any update immediately. What we need to do is change the display from ticks to geometry. And now you can see we have updated our um, viewports to show the geometry, but they're not rotated the proper way. Uh, no big deal. What we need to do is change the initial bullets, and we need to change the shape from shape to a shape instance. So drag it out, drop it on top where the red line is, which will replace it. And now select it, pick geometry object. We want these to be bullets. So now we need to change the display from ticks to geometry and we have bullets but they're rotated the wrong way. That's because by de by default the rotation set to random 3D. Let's change that to speed space. So now they're rotated and they're all going kind of the same way but they're rotated at 90 degrees to where we want them to be and that's not what we want. So let's go ahead and modify that. We can change the rotation and find which slider works here. There we go. Change the rotation to negative 90 on the Y, which should line everything up with the direction that the bullets are traveling. And now everything lines up appropriately. Very good. Now another thing that I'm noticing here is that our particles, our trails, are being emitted by the, you know, right in the middle of the bullet. And that's because the pivot point of our source bullet is here at the front. To correct this, all we need to do is go to the Effect Hierarchy uh, pad the hierarchy panel, I guess, affect pivot only, and move the pivot back. And when we move the pivot back to the back part of the bullet, you can see that it adjusts where the particle basically is in the, in the uh, puts the particle right here at the pivot point so that the trails will be emitted from the back of the bullet, which is much more akin to what we want. All right, so now we've got the trails being spit out, the bullets, everything looks proper. Um, the only thing is, I noticed that in the Matrix movie, actually these lenses 
are bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller and kind of have this undulating look. And believe it or not, we can do the same thing in 3D Max. So let's go ahead and take care of that. To our uh, trails here, let's rename it. Let's go ahead and add on a scale modifier. Pop that in. And we'll leave it at overwrite once. And what we're going to do is we're going to animate this. So we'll come down here to frame zero, hit auto key, come to about 25 frames, and we're going to go up to maybe about 130, come down another 25 frames, we're going to go back down to 100, another 25 frames, go up to 130, and back down to 100. So now this will just kind of loop through. Turn off our auto key and if we minimize you can see that we have our particles being emitted and they're actually growing and getting smaller and growing and getting smaller exactly like what was in the movie. We can you know rotate around a little bit to see from behind so you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. If you want these to vary even more, just go ahead and change the scaling. Uh, you can go all the way down to like 80 to up to 150 or so, but I didn't want to get too crazy. All right, so we have our bullet, we have our trails. We can go ahead and hide our sources here, our source bullet and our source uh, lens. Right click and choose hide selected. There we go. Now we need to add some materials to this. Now I typically use final render but uh, I know a lot of you may not have that. So let's go ahead and use the Mental Ray Renderer since everybody has that. Go to our setup and I'm going to change the Assign Renderer tab to Mental Ray. Okay. So now let's go to our Material Editor. And the first thing we want to do is add in a bullet material. So let's rename this first material bullet. And I'm just going to kind of be lazy here and pick a already done material. So we'll pick a pro material, we'll go metal, and we'll use that since it's already done, it's fast, and change it to brass or bronze, whatever you know you like better. We'll go with bronze. Actually I think most things are brass. We'll go with brass, a little brighter. And let's grab our second one and let's choose uh we'll call this lens and this time we're going to leave it at standard. We're going to come down here to the map section, turn on the refraction, and put into our refraction slot a ray trace map. Okay. Now what we want to do is jack up the specular level pretty high and then increase the glossiness as well. So we have a nice bright um, specular with a nice glossy look and minimize that, bring back up our particle flow here, and we want to assign a material. And I'll just pull this over to the side so we don't have... There we go. We want to add in a material static to each of these. So we'll drop this one in, and we're going to click this and choose from the material editor bullet. So there we go. And we also want to add a material static to this and this one we want to be lens. So if we've done everything correctly, we should be able to see a decent render. So we'll pop this out. And right now it doesn't look too exciting because we have no light set up, we have no nothing to refract or anything else, but as you can see we have the bullets, the refraction, everything's working fine. Let's go ahead and add in a spherical map to our environment and I'm just going to pick one from a picture that I found on the internet go in the diffuse channel go to new bitmap pull up uh, here we go we'll go to the spherical mall of a map here or map mall change this to an environment a spherical environment and we only want the map section of this so we just drag the map into a new slot as an instance and then we'll come to the Rendering Environment tab and drop this in as an instance as well. So now when we render this out, we should have some basically 3D um, lighting and 3D 
world to refract and reflect off of. And as you can see, everything appears to render rendered perfectly. Uh, looks pretty good. Okay, as a final note uh, or final bit here, you'll notice that, um, especially at the very last scene um, where Neo was in the kind of the old apartment building and the bullets were coming at him and he stopped them, the bullets kind of froze in midair. And I always thought that was a cool effect. And I'll show you quickly how you can achieve the exact same thing inside of 3D Max with this exact same setup. Right now, these bullets will just keep traveling at the same speed at infinitum. Um, or infinitely, but uh, if you want to have them slow down, that's not a big deal. Let's go back to our particle view here. And if you want to, we can increase the speed up maybe to 450 to make them go a lot faster. And what that'll also do um, is make them go further, but as you can see, since we uh, adjusted the trails based upon distance and not upon speed or time, we still have the same quantity or same uh, distance between our trails, which I think is, is pretty nice. And it's also going to help us in our next uh, effect here where we're going to slow these down. What we need to do is add in a force modifier, go to space warps, and we're going to add in a drag modifier. So we'll just come in here to the front and just drag out a drag modifier or space warp. Now we'll come back and to our bullets here we need to append by either right clicking or just dragging and dropping a force operator right there and we want to change this force operator add by list and we only have one right now, which is the drag. Select it. And now we can adjust the parameters of the influence and stuff. Uh, so what we can do is pull this over to the side. And as you can see, these things start slowing down as they get farther away. And the more we increase the influence, the faster they slow down. So if we kind of zoom out and move around to the side here. You can see these things come out rather fast and then slow down like an invisible hand or force field is stopping them, uh, which is pretty much what Neo did. So there you have it. I mean, it's uh, you know obviously not rocket science, but it can create some pretty cool effects and you can do the little bullet time deal where you can put a camera in and then maybe rotate around the scene as the bullets are going out and uh, that will effectively recreate exactly what we saw in the matrix. Um, so, you know, tweak the materials a little bit, tweak the setup. You can, you know, have this sh stuff shooting out of a gun. You could have, you know, more bullets, less bullets, whatever you want. Um, but uh, I just thought that was a pretty neat technique to share, and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, you can post them uh, in the comment section to this tutorial, and I will attempt to answer them as best I can. Uh, until next time, thanks again for watching, and this has been Michael Park for CreativeCow.net.